tough times never leave anybody everybody has a tough time in their own life but it happens like some people they surrender but others they surmount these tough times and it's always said that you have some good things in those tough times also but why i'm saying this because i have the guest in front of me today that he has gone through all those tough times but she never surrendered she always surmounted all the conditions yes she also thought of surrendering sometimes but she stayed over there she had a patience and then she surmounted all the things and now she is teaching people how to go ahead all those things go ahead with the, all those things and leave those negativity behind you and grow in your life my name is alok alok joshi the student of public speaking and human behavior and now i welcome you all to this brand new episode of alok joshi alok joshi talk to rock and my special guest today is karishma kiran karishma kiran is from chennai and she will tell each and everything about why i did say so many things about her and you will come to know about her so i take the opportunity to welcome karishma karishma kiran karishma welcome to the show alok joshi talk to rock thank you for inviting me sir it's a pleasure being in your show it is almost like a prestige now being in your show and i'm very happy for this amazing opportunity like how they say many opportunities you know they go away but the best what you require will always be there with you and i consider this one such <laughs> thank you thank you very much and yes just because of uh, people like you people fighters like you this show is uh, getting more and more yeah little bit fame i can say not <laughs> more so karishma let us start with your journey because when we had a discussion you said you had some moments of depression in your past and you were about to surrender to them but something made you to surmount to win over those situations can we start with your, with your story why what did happen to you and what made you come out of these situations definitely sir i am very proud now i am going to tell my story not with the view of asking for people sympathy or empathy yeah. but i am extremely proud for what i've been through today because of all that that i've been through those days i was sad about it but now it is a very interesting story to others more than a story a story with a moral that's how my story is to everybody i would like to tell you this i am basically a malayali but born in chennai and my mother and father they got married due to some family issues in a very early age i was born to my mother when she was studying her in her 10th standard she was in her 10th standard and later on they both moved with me to bangalore and i was there for around 3 4 years then and finally what happened is that they both were studying they were working and i had to study to i was in my lkg ukg that time so they themselves being very young they were studying they were working my father those days he comes from a very rich family his father that is my grandfather owns a big hospital and later on he happened to become a director in a movie so his father it's not that they are poor they both of them come from very affluent families my mother's grandfather and all these people uh, father and all these people are actors in cinema and then they come from a very affluent background uh, actually but since they were into this suddenly they moved in they had to pay for everything my father carried water cans delivered water cans from one house to another from mm. morning 4 am to night to night 11:30 he delivers water cans for one oh. water can that he carries and he delivers he gets 25 pais that is his profit oh oh from such family we had to start we had to have such a humble start my mother there was a situation where my mother had to beg for food for me she did she did that uh and what happened is i was uh, i was uh, in my ukg this certain incidences i have eidetic memory actually eidetic memory is a bless and a curse that is okay 
single incident in your life you will be able to remember it so vividly your okay. memory is so strong that you can remember even the smallest details in your life okay. even the book page number like that i am blessed with that eidetic memory that i remember these incidences that's that's why i'm able to tell this yeah i was affected with malaria okay as a four year old whatever i eat or drink i'm vomiting completely and there's no money left at home to buy even a single tablet for me just a single tablet and i my mother decided that definitely i will not be alive to see the next sunrise and my mother is ready with rat poison she's sitting next to me my father has gone to work work delivering water cans okay she is ready she is sitting with a poison if i if i don't wake up from my sleep she is ready to drink it and she is also ready to die oh, 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 oh. and she went on asking for food this happened he had i gotten that food i would stay alive just some porridge just some porridge that's it but with god's grace she went and asked to her neighbor and her neighbor gave her a big bowl of porridge for me and for my mother and i was alive my temperature reduced to see the next sunrise that is one incident which shows as a child i was a survivor a storm survivor that is one second incident now everything is okay everything yeah. is fine now we have three to four cars my father is a director now one thing not to forget sir this maybe this fighter spirit came from my mother and father maybe because my father he earned he worked and he is an mba mba gold medalist oh, oh, oh. my father is only 2 years elder than my mother when she was studying in her 10th i was born they both earned they right. both studied. and he ended up becoming an mba gold medalist and my mother ended up doing her bsc okay and later on she did her H hr m okay. mba i believe that okay so we have cars he has got his chance doing his movie and all that and now many understanding issues misunderstanding issues no time to spend with each other many things many things happened by and more than communication there were only fights now ever since my childhood i am having a troubled past and not once not twice i've seen my mother trying to attempt for suicide many times at oh. least three four times oh oh and more so once when my mother was having a problem with my father she i've told this story before but i would like to tell this again please please yeah uh, she, Uh, gave me a prescription i was a very enthusiastic child i was a hyperactive child actually mm. i always have a competition with boys okay all the energy the competition is with them okay so i'm like running on this skating on the construction sand that they have and riding cycles right uh, that kind of a person so one day my mother calls me and then she gave me a prescription i know nothing in that age just a prescription okay. and she had to buy those medicines from the medical shop i bought it and i came back i gave it to her i didn't even have the time to even tell that that i gave it to her i just put it on the bed i ran back to play okay that was on day and when i came back home with all the dust and all one half of my dress is already torn with playing <laughs> uh, i was all tired <laughs> and that cup right and suddenly see a big crowd in front of my house mm -hmm. a crowd of more than 15 to 20 people in front of my house mm -hmm. grandmother yelling on top of her voice crying a kind of yell she's yelling crying and the moment that i step inside the house she immediately beats me she starts beating me telling okay. that you mother you killed your mother and then she starts beating naturally as a child with no reason not knowing the reason she is being bad and she is telling you are the reason you are the reason i just ran to my mother and i see my mother frothing from her mouth froth is oh. coming from oh and the prescription of tablets that my mother gave me was the tablet she used to suicide oh oh this 
was when I was in my second standard. First standard or second standard that time. My God. As a second standard child, I I saw my mother talking to me and then taking the tablet. She has taken it and then she's in her deathbed. She immediately rushed to you uh, in the what is that ambulance? Then in the, I saw her struggling for two whole days, oh. struggling her heart out. I know there's something wrong. I know there's something going bad. That day, I really more than crying as even as a child, I felt a deep betrayal. Mm -hmm. I felt betrayal because she made me to buy the tablets and that is what she has used to take her life. Yeah, yes. her, but she did it, whatever problem may be, but she used me for that. I love my mother with all my heart, even now. But even now, if I'm telling you the story, yeah. this happened in 2001. But that's a scar. That's a never healing scar. Now, why I'm telling all this? After that, life went on, life things moved on. And then fast forwarding to 2013. There is this time when my mother and father breaks up. What they decide. 14, 2014. 13. 13. 2000. Okay. Okay. Bachelor's degree, first year. They okay. decide. Now, what happens is that I'm bewildered. I'm baffled again after all these years of struggle. Now we are fine. We have a house. We have everything. Okay. Everything. But that peace of mind. That balance in life is what is most important for a child. To many parents who fight in front of their child or to, or when they put their child down in front of others, they really don't understand the kind of mentality that the child is being put through. Yeah. That is something that everyone needs to understand. And that is one of the most important factors which will keep the balance of the child for the rest of his entire life. Right. That slipped away for me there again. Again. Mm -hmm. After this, th then in another two days is my exam. I had to, I wasn't able to learn. I was a very good learning student, always in my 95s or maximum 85 to 95. Even if I don't study, somehow with God's grace, I was able to get 85 at least. Right. That's mm -hmm. the kind of student I am. But that exam, I was not able to go. The only arena okay. in all my college. I was not able to go. I couldn't take the exam. But I had one amazing friend. Amazing friend who he also bunked that exam with me. For okay. Me. Okay. Just for my mental support. Nice. Everybody needs that friend. Yes. <laughs> they could be related to you or not related to you however but in your times of difficulty if you open your eyes ears and heart definitely in one form of the other nature will replace someone somewhere yes I will never say time will heal but I will say nature replaces okay okay for me all my life Nature has always been replacing my wound, even though it is not healed fully, but somehow there has been a medicine for my wound all the times. Great. And I'm proud about it. Great. Be maybe because I saw my mother committing suicide more than two to three times right in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. I solution to the problem is that. Truthfully speaking, whenever I've seen my mother and father fight, I've and when I had my personal problems in life, I sought out to taking away my life three times. Not once, not twice, three times. But as a child once, I just sprayed Martin on my face. And then, oh. I, and then I felt, as a child, I'm telling you, this is when yes, I was yes. Yes. And it started burning everywhere. And I feel breathing difficulty. Immediately, I kept it aside. As a child. And the second time was when I was in my eighth. I don't know what I have to use to suicide. 
I don't know what I should do. I just ran and there was a big bottle of shampoo. I said a sample tester pack, this much big. Yeah. It was a foreign brand, so the tester pack was given. We had come from uh, a hotel. We stayed in a hotel in that tester pack. Okay. And I didn't know what to do. I drank it. Shampoo. Yeah, shampoo. I didn't know what to do. I okay. was in much of depression, actually. Now it is funny. But uh, to people whom ever think that they should suicide, if they die, good luck. Congratulations to them. They have succeeded in their mission. Mm -hmm. After they commit suicide and when they get rescued, yes. for another two to three months, life is hell for them. The pain, on, just because of that, you know, taking away your life is not an easy task. People need to understand that. If you are depressed, be. Be depressed. Nature will heal. You will find the strength. You know, sir, I've told this before also. Like how you press a ball so much inside the water with all the force that will come out. The same way when you are being stressed and pressed so much with all the force, with your entire energy, you will come out. I will tell this. I am a role model to everybody today. I'm not telling this like as if I'm great, but at least you can learn from me. And the third time is I, I ate sleeping tablets because I was in a depression. The certain resting tablets were given to me. I ate 40 tablets. And that was because that time I was quite matured. I knew what I had to do. So I ate 40 tablets. But somehow, again, maybe it is the God will or my destiny. Somehow, exactly at that time, people, they opened my door and they came inside and I was unconscious. And then immediately I was rescued two days in the hospital and it was done. But... After that, I realized one thing. Taking away your life is just never a solution to your problem. You are a quitter. You are nothing else than a coward quitter. What are you quitting? Temporary problems? For that, you are taking away 30 to 40 years of the next happiest moments of your life? And is that problem worth it? No, definitely not. Then why is taking such a drastic step? You, I, I will always, even in the comments, I put this. Every human being is a storm survivor. And we, yes. having crossed the 2020, all of us can tell this. Even Kesha can tell this. Yes. Now, now yes. everybody can tell this. Yes, confirm this. Yeah. So we all are fighters. We've done it. We have proof. Then why quit? Because it is the easiest mm -hmm. option, why do we choose that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I was just reliving all those moments and picturizing all those things. Like that porridge, then tablets, then froth and everything. And you being the, in the second standard and then you were beaten up like... It's everything so weird and like how people can behave with somebody. Yes, I do know in the heat of your anger, you definitely do something. But say when you, uh, when you recollect everything in the future, that see how it feels like, as you said, now it, it looks funny, but definitely when you were living those moments, it was the serious yes. moment for you. Exactly. But say, Karishma, having gone through all those uh, difficult times, all those negativity, what made you to come out of all those things? You attempted, like you said, attempted the extreme yeah. also. But what made you to come out of those things? What made you to think, no, life is really beautiful. Life has to be lived. What helped you or not? what made you to come out of that? That was a moment of realization. So I'll tell you, just now I told my mother and father separated. After that, my mother left me in a hostel and she was really disturbed with everything that happened after that. And she found a job which will give her a change of place and she left there. Because I was working in, right after a college, I got placed right here in Chennai. So I, I had to be here. Okay. I was new to work also, so I couldn't quit as well. So I had to stay. She put me in the hostel and four years she was away. I've, I didn't meet my mother even once for the next four years. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly right before three months only she came back to living with me. Just three months before. Okay. Until then it was four years I didn't meet her. And maximum four to five times I would have spoken to her. That's it. Right. I was in a hostel and I'm a fresher just out of college. All the suffering, everything ended in my maximum when I was 15. All the suffering ended when I was 15. But after that, I was able to take a car that I wanted to go in. I had a big house to okay. live in. Anytime money. Uh, and also my mother and father encouraged me to earn. I took tuitions. I went and taught people. And that, because right. French was my field, I got quite a lot of opportunities. My first salary itself was around 12000 Okay. So, in the, as a child, I had a difficult past. But in between this time was a glorious period for me. But immediately from this glorious period, right after college, suddenly you're being put in a hostel and food, petrol, hostel fee, everything I had to pay from my pocket. Okay. I had to spend okay. everything and that is not something easy. Taking care of all the responsibility, next day food also, I'll have to earn to do it. Agreed, agreed. And the biggest problem is in that school, since I was a youngster, I was the youngest person and I was given a big post also, only they will uh, catch my salary and they saw to it that they gave my salary the last. Okay. They asked what responsibility do you have? I cannot go and keep explaining this to my employer. Right. I couldn't tell anything. They give my salary only by the 15th or the 20th of every month. I'm staying mm-hmm. in a hostel. Every single day when I cross that third of every month, yes. that hostel warden calls out my name in front of 50 to 60 people. My God. Telling that I have not given the fee. I can't even eat my food properly. I can't even put my hand on the plate to eat the food. It is a big... Uh, insult that I was a youngster that is the point of the view mm. for a mature person handling this could have been easier but as a 19 year old as a 20 year old this is a tough task so earning that money was a big job but that time where did I learn that strength from how did I overcome one day in the hostel, there was nobody else left. I didn't have money. Everyone went to the movies together. I didn't have money to go. So I was in the room left alone. One day I thought of all the suicide events, all these, and then how, how I have survived these events. Who has survived? Me. Of course, my mother and father and all were there. Okay. But I survived it myself. Where is the strength coming from? Me. Who is strong? Me. Who has lived the moment? Me. And who can go through the future? Me. I will be able to do it. So where is the strength coming from? Me. Come on. I am the strongest. I should be able to push that negativity also. Who is that man to push me into the ditch? Come on. I am ditching that negativity. Right. I am stronger, much more than that negativity to push me down. And that inner strength, self-realization, that strength, that courage is the underword. That made me to push negativity away. Great, great. Loved your story and a great respect for you too. Thank you. you. Great, great story. So... Oh, after having overcome all those things, now w- what do you do? As you said, uh, French is your field, teaching French, your field. What do you do right now? I am a very successful teacher and a coordinator now. In seven years time, I have managed to, as I told you, I was doing part-time job ever since college before. Yeah. Seven years of working career, I was able to climb up the ladder and I'm a coordinator now. Uh, just uh, just today, uh, yesterday, I got uh, placed in a new school as a coordinator and with a salary of 44 take home. 44 take home and right. a very happy person now. And I'm teaching uh, languages, great. Uh, students. And I do a bit of counseling as well, but that is a total free of cost. I'm not charging right. for it. 
Okay. Right. I know the kind of mental stress and the kind of mentality that those people are in, the difficulty that children go through. Not for elders, this is for children. Children. Be it any mental stress that they are in, I give them counseling free of course. This is what right. I can give back to people who are in need because I didn't yeah. receive it when I was in need. Very good. Very good. Nice. I also do recollect uh, some of the events when I coached I mentored some of the students. I was, I happened to be a soft skill trainer in one of the engineering colleges. There the students, they used to come to me with so many of their issues and some are so trivial, but they were so emotional about it that it was very difficult for them to come out of it. So yes. I, I do understand how the emotions of these youngsters, they pour into their uh, plight and because they think it's a plight, but it's nothing to do with their life as such. But they think that it's going to be very difficult. So counseling is very much important for yes. these youngsters. Otherwise, they go in a very wrong path. Exactly, sir. That too, these days, the parents, we can blame the parents also, maybe because of the economy status yeah. or what. Each of them has only one child and everybody is working these days. Right. So when they come, the, uh, the parent only pampers the child. So the child is growing up with so much of self-esteem and, uh, uh, you know, attention that even when someone scolds them or talks to them in a little higher voice, they're not able to tolerate it. Yes. The children these days are extremely hypersensitive. I wouldn't even say sensitive. They are hypersensitive. hypersensitive. That needs a lot of uh, handling and molding and talking. That talking... To these hypersensitive children is what they are lacking. Absolutely. Because of this busy life, they are losing time. Parents are not having the time to talk. They are going on vacation. Everything is happening. Mm. They can get whatever they want from their parents. I'm not saying no to that. But that talking time, the time a parent gives to the child is the most important. That is paramount. Yes, yes, yes. I do agree to it. Because it happened with my child also. When I learned all those things, now I make sure that I spend time with her. Exactly. I spend time with her and now she's much more frank to me. She talks each and everything about her life to me. So I feel so blessed about it that I am able to make that connection with her. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, having been able to make a child talk to us is a big yes. task. Yeah. You give that complete freedom and not judge the child. Yes, yes. And days, especially in teenage. Exactly. Yeah. The time when children say that they have a crush and all this, their hormone and oxytocin and all yes. starts working so much. <laughs> we can judge children. When we start judging and when we start shouting at them, they go into a deep cave yes. from which we pull them out. From that time onwards, everything that they tell us, partly true is partly false. Right. Until and unless they get into some trouble, we will never know the child's true self. That's a big problem. That Absolutely. is a that's an identity crisis these days. Right. It happens. I experienced this myself, so I can probably tell that too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So having one over all those things, being in the state of triumphant, and then you are uh, teaching students also nowadays. What is your plan? Because you are so young now. I can ask, I can ask, I had asked many people who are at the age of 50, 45 at my age and then asking them, what's your plan? But see, you have so much of time. So you should definitely make it big, great. So you would have definitely thought about it. So if I ask you, what are your plans? Where do you want to go 10 years down the line, five years down the line? What's basically your blueprint? Sir, as I told you, as a child, having gone through all this, I am a person who plans before I wasn't. But when I started earning myself, when I started gaining that uh, base, I understood that I'll have to be planning for five years and then okay. five years is the duration. So I have like I've broken up the duration time. Okay. So first for the next five years now. I want to establish myself as an individual first. Right. Absolutely. Getting married is an easy task. Actually, getting married is an easy task because yes. for 
yeah there are many girls out there and there are many men out, outside there it's easy but to prove yourself and to find the right person i'm not talking about marriage but to prove yourself is very very important these days yes because okay. because these days there are many job opportunities there are many professions counseling uh, typewriting this that there are many professions but there is no one proper person to guide the other person yeah. because there are many hundred teachers are there hundred managers are there hundred admins are there who is the right person we don't know that identification is becoming difficult right correct so i why i'm telling this is i want to be the person that people identify to be the role model you have a difficulty in life you identify me i am here and right. that is the kind of person that i want to be in another 5 years time right. establish this great 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 thought and great plans actually because Thank people you. need good coaches people need good mentors who will guide them towards the right path towards the right decision making Exactly. because i feel decision making is one thing which changes the course of life Very whatever true. you want to do in your life your decisions have to be influenced well if exactly. they are not done well you will not find your better place in this world and i'm 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 thankful to you and i'm happy to know about all those things that you have planned this thing because we need such type of people who have experienced everything and because it it's a hands on experience it's not like you are bookish and then telling everybody preaching somebody but it's a hands on experience the person who has gone through so much of a blight and ordeal in his life or life and now she is telling that this is life boss you can't end it like that you have to live you have to overcome your challenges great to know all about this thing last word for these people i may say people i may say teenagers or youngsters who are suffering from all those issues they may tell it to somebody they may not tell it to somebody but they are suffering with some of the issues that they think it's very difficult to come out of those situations what is your last message for them means the final message in this show what would you suggest them to anyone who is going through any difficulty in their life be teenagers anybody but when you are going through a difficulty there is one thing that you need to understand keep your eyes ears and heart open because usually when you feel you know when you are in times of difficulty you tend to close yourself and go back you don't allow people to come near you you shut down yourself you call yourself negative things don't do that when you are in a negative crisis open your eyes years listen to what people are telling you open your eyes and look at things properly read between the lines and keep open heart because definitely the person who is just next to you is always willing to do things for you when we are in difficulty that is something we don't realize we don't trust first of all that right. is something that we need to do and the energy to do all that you are the epitome for that do it yes trust open Absolutely. your heart yeah that's that's what needed because it happens in tough times we think that there is no solution there is no hope there is no ray of hope in our life at yes. that times the people who have really gone through such difficult times they are the real examples because they have lived the bad situation as well as the situation they have arisen from so that yes. is very much important so it's it was a great time to talk to you all those things and your experience definitely it, it gave me so much of insight and it will give the insight through people who are suffering in their life due to any reason due to emotional due to physical or due to any other reason they are suffering but you have given them some hope you have given them some ray that yes you can come out of those situations if you decide exactly thank you very much talking to me on this alok joshi talk to rock show and you really rocked you are <laughs> one of the examples in youngsters you are one of the examples that you can win thank you very much for being here so ladies and gentlemen this was karishma karishma kiran the struggler and the winner the fight <laughs> struggler fighter and the winner 
and i am <laughs> blessed to have her in my show today thank you very much for being here karishma thank you so much for this amazing opportunity and for being able to tell other people and help them some way possible thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you thank you so much it it will be helpful definitely it will help for the people yes. so ladies and gentlemen amazing show today with uh, karishma kiran my name is alok alok joshi watching you smiling over there we'll meet again with the same smile thank you very much mm -hmm.